I want to turn to James chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, we're also going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, but I'm going to start here. My brethren, do not hold the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings, fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you stand there. Or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? The late Max Cadenden had uh, he was the pastor of First Baptist Church in Naples, Florida. He riveted his congregation one day with a bold confession. And this is what he says, My message today is on the parable of the Good Samaritan, Max announced. Let me start with an illustration. Remember last year when the Browns came forward to join the church? Everyone nodded. The Browns were very, had become a very influential fa- family. Well, the same day that they were, they came, a young man came and gave his life to the Lord. I could not. I could tell the need. Uh, I could tell he needed help, and so we counseled him. But no one in the congregation nodded or even remembered this individual. Uh, Caden Head uh, says we worked with the Browns. We got them into committees. They've been wonderful people. Several in the congregation were amening. Yeah, that's right. But the young man we lost track of. Until yesterday, that is, when I was preparing today's message and the good, on the Good Samaritan, I picked up the paper and there was that young man's picture. He had shot and killed an elderly woman. Con- in the ch- congregation, chins dropped. I never followed up on that young man, and so I'm the priest who saw the man in trouble and crossed the, to the other side of the road. I'm the hypocrite. Partiality. James said, if someone comes in and you recognize they are of some worldly value and you make room for them and elevate them and get, just make a big fuss about them, but then the one who has nothing to offer in this world, you just ignore. We are showing partiality. We should not be that way. Amen. Because you see, in the kingdom of God, we are all of equal value and worth to the Lord. Amen. While we are used differently, perhaps, sometimes people are used more than others. It's not, I've I've been telling my kids of of late, you know, opportunity looks an awful lot like availability. (laughs) Just so you know. (laughs) Sometimes it's not that we don't have opportunities, it's that we don't make ourselves available, and so somebody who's available is going to be used. But people are used differently, perhaps, in the kingdom of God, perhaps even in the church. But that does not mean that value or worth is any different. Because we are all the children of God. We are all valuable in the kingdom of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to read it here in a minute, we learn that not only are we all of equal value to God, And you and I, as being filled with the Holy Ghost, should recognize this. And we, even though sometimes we have people that we kind of click with really good, there's sometimes people that we just just get. Right? There's some people we just plain flat out like more than others. That's just the reality. Let's be human. Okay? That doesn't mean that that should be the only way that we operate. Just because we get someone, just because we click with them, just because someone is a little different than us, that doesn't mean that they're not valuable or not usable or not available in the kingdom of God. Because the scripture says that the congregation should not show partiality. But we should recognize that we all have something to offer and bring to the kingdom of God. We all have something to offer to the king. We get all emotional about the little drummer boy, right? 
Little drummer boy, Christmas time. I don't have anything to give him but this little drum. And all your, your eyes are teared. Oh, that's right. I'm just going to play this drum for him, right? You know? And it's just like, that's right. That's so awesome. He gave everything he had. We get all excited about the little boy who came to Jesus uh, uh, when he was feeding, uh, when, when he was, had 5,000 people out there at his, at his message. Wouldn't that be quite the congregation? Out in the middle of, middle of the, 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 the field, and uh, he, he, has, he has five loaves and a couple of fish, and he brings them to Jesus, because Jesus asked, is there any food? And this is all I have, it's my lunch, here you go. And we get all excited and emotional, and we're, man, that's so awesome, he gave everything he had, he gave up his lunch for Jesus, Right? But yet we're also sometimes the same people to be very quick about identifying people who have something to offer and people that don't have something to offer. And we evaluate what that is and we make determinations on if we like them or not or how we interact with them or not or what opportunities we're going to give them or not based upon what they have to offer. Us. Amen. But in the kingdom of God, God doesn't look at what little we have compared to what others have of great, in great abundance, but He looks at our heart and He will take what we can give, what we are capable of giving, and as long as we are giving to God what we have, He, with a sincere heart, He will take that and He will use that and He will make something greater with it because of His anointing and power. Unless, of course, the church, the body, amen, kills that opportunity before God has an opportunity to use it. Because we overlook somebody. Or we think, oh, well, they've been this in the past, and so we're not going to uh, give them grace. Right? Because that's where we, our mindset has to come in. God is always ready to take what we have, even if it's little, and use it for His kingdom and His glory. Amen? God doesn't play favorites. He doesn't look at someone who has great amounts of talent and just love on them and bless them and encourage them. And, 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 but He gives everyone an opportunity if we will give of our heart. Amen. That should make us excited because, you know, that God's going to use what we have. He's the one who gave us what we have in the first place. <laughs> He's the one that determines what gift we have, what, what, what talents we have, what, what, what abilities we have in this world. He doesn't expect more of us than we're capable, but he also doesn't expect less of us than we're capable. He knows us. And in the kingdom of God, this is in, in the church setting, this is where we have to re keep this mindset and say, you know what, I cannot overlook just because I like someone better or I don't like someone better or I don't get them or they're just, you know, a little awkward or weird. Uh, you know, that's still a child of God. Whether I get them or not. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, uh, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body, one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member but many. If the foot say, say, should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is that therefore not of the body the whole body uh, if the whole body were an eye were uh, where would be the hearing 
If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were, uh, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Praise God. We are members of the same body. Amen. Amen. How many remember that song? We are members of the same body working together, right? Years, a few years ago, Brother Randall was here and he was ta- te- teaching us that song. We are members of the same body serving the Lord, right? Who remembers the, what's, who's remembers the, cor- the verse? You remember the verse? How does it go? Nobody? Man, people pipe up at the wrong time, but when you ask them to pipe up, they just clam up like nothing, man. <laughs> right? One's not more important than the other because we're working together. We're part of the body of Christ. God has set the members in the body the way that He determines. Amen? Verse 25 says, uh, or verse, verse 20, the end of verse 24 says, Our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks, that there be no schism. Everybody say, no schism. In the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Amen. Church, I believe that it's important for us to understand and to recognize that we need to look at people, we need to look at the church, and we need to look at the kingdom of God. We need to look at our lives just like God does and not like our own. We cannot show partiality. We can't only hang out with the people that we like. We have to give opportunity to everybody. Because there's going to be some people that you just naturally like better than others. And guess what? There's going to be some people that they just don't get along with you all that much. So what? Praise God. Amen. It, that's life, man. We don't all like the same things. Some people, some people like... Like, like sparkling water. I don't get it. I've tried it a hundred times. I want to like it. I mean, I want to be cool and trend, trendy and metro. I mean, but it's just gross. I'm just, just, it's just not going to happen for me. I just can't do sparkling water. And some of you are like, well, what's wrong with sparkling water? I love that stuff. Great. You drink it. I'm saving it for you. (laughs) I got one amen. (laughs) We're different. We have different taste buds. It's okay. It's the same thing with people. There's some things people are going to do. I mean, I mean... It's weird, but some people like putting their hands in dirt and running it all around and putting things in it and massaging dirt. I don't get it. They call it gardening. (laughs) All I see is dirty hands. (laughs) I'm at the same time teasing my wife who likes to garden. (laughs) It's okay. We're not all the same, but yet we are all still part of the body. Amen? And even though I'm not really all that into gardening, I'm really glad people do because they make awesome things like, you know, food. (laughs) Praise God. And we all bring something different to the kingdom of God, and God has placed us in His kingdom the way that He wants and we need to realize that, uh, that, that we need to appreciate that, recognize even those who do things or act in a way or, or think a little bit differently than us, then, then somehow, guess what? You know what? It's probably okay. It's probably even good. He said, if everyone was the foot, where would be the hearing? 
Have you ever wanted to be something that, that you didn't have an opportunity to be or you saw someone do something and you're just like, wow, I just really would like to be a lot like that. And, you know, just you admire something about them and you're just like, wow, that's so cool. I wish I had that. I was just telling somebody uh, just, just yesterday about, the, uh, about the, the, my childhood pastor. Uh, this, this was a man who genuinely just loved people. He's just, uh, just, uh, just a lover of people. He f- thrived being in the mix with, with people. And he was very, just, he just loved people. I wish I did. I admire that about him. I remember as a, as a kid, he's uh, probably at that point in his, in his 70s, late 60s, 70s, and, and he's out there with the teenagers throwing the football around, right? He's just, he just liked being around the group, or enjoyed people, and, and he had a, a way of talking to you in such a way that just made you feel like a million dollars. I wish I had that. Truth is, I don't. I'm sorry, you're stuck with me. <laughs> I try, I really do, but it's just, I'm, not, I'm just not made up of the same stuff. I have the same spirit, but I have other giftings and talents. I just have to be who I am. And I'll try to make up the difference. I'll try to be positive. I'll try to, you know, make you feel like a million dollars. It's just that I'm not going to do it every single time I talk to you. Sometimes I'm just going to stare at you and just say, it's nice to see you. I just don't have anything else to say. I'm sorry. I know you're laughing because you've all been there. You're just like, okay, well, he's got something on his mind. (laughs) Praise God. You ever been that person around that person who just never shuts up? They're like a little chihuahua. God puts them with people that don't talk a lot. It's all good. Amen. If you put that person with someone who talked a lot, the world might explode. Right? You kind of need both. You kind of need the give and take. Amen. But sometimes we get it mixed up in our heads and we forget that we need the people in our church, in our lives, in our family, in our relationships that are just a little bit different than us. And not only is it, you know, because most of us, we're like, like we're all kind of of the same mindset. We'll, we'll tolerate it because we know everybody's valuable to God. OK, so we'll let you be who you are. But we need to move beyond just to let you be who you are to realize that not only am I going to let you be who you are, I know it's hard to believe. I know you don't think that you're missing or lacking anything, but the reality is they actually have something that you need, that you're lacking, that you're missing in their life. I, I know, I, I hear it. We're trying. We're trying to come to us like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we want to believe that. We really do. But truthfully, Pastor, I mean, I'm complete. <laughs> I'm, right? But the scripture tells us that, amen, we do. Now, I'm not trying to be all mushy and get, get weird on you and, you know, But the reality is, is that we need each other in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, everybody close your eyes and say, we need the weirdos in the church. (laughs) (laughs) Praise God. We're one body. We're one body because we're of one spirit. 
Amen. When we're filled with the Holy Ghost, it is God's Spirit that breathes life into us. It is, and I don't receive a different Holy Ghost than you do. We don't, we don't all have different spirits running around. It is the, the, the new birth. When, you're, when, you're, when you repent of your sins and you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we're all baptized in the same name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we, we are all given, God's Spirit comes into, into us. We begin to speak with new tongues as, as the Spirit gives us utterance. And although we may not speak the same language that comes out, it is the same Spirit that is going into us that is prompting this and is making us a new creature in Christ Jesus. He makes us a part of a new family. Amen. I had the privilege of uh, baptizing my uh, my nephew uh, yesterday, and um, and as we as we talked uh, to him, I, I I told him I said you're 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 not just you're not just an American anymore. You're not just a Reed anymore, but you are a part of the family of God. You are uh, you are being born again. You've already he's he's already received the Holy Ghost, and that and that was exciting. And now he's completing that that birth process of of being born into the kingdom of God. His citizenship is in heaven. We are all one body. And so if Jesus, uh, if Jesus and God are of one essence, which is what we know is true, how does that affect us who are born again of the Holy Spirit? This is what Paul says in verse 12 again, uh, reading it again. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Amen. Wouldn't it be nicer if he just talked about being in the family of God? Now he's talking about being in the body. Like, if you're part of the family, you still have your own body, right? If you're in a family, you might still be able to just kind of get away by yourself and have your own space. But you're part of the family, so you know, you go to the family picnics, you go to the family reunions, but then you get to go to your own house and do your own thing. But he's not satisfying saying we're part of the family of God, which is true. But he says, no, 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 it goes further than that. You're not just part of the family of God with your own house and your own things. and You're you're part of the body of Christ. That means you're actually connected. And that weird looking ear in the kingdom of God is a part of who you are. And you need it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So then if Jesus and God are the same essence, how does that affect those who are born again? He says, you are one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, all have been made to drink of one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. The church, we understand, is the body of Christ. In other words, Jesus Jesus was here. He walked on earth. He died on the cross. He went to the grave. He rose again. His body went up. He's gone, but yet He sends His Spirit back to us who become His body. We become His physical representation on this earth. That's what it's talking about when it's using that analogy of the body. His Spirit comes into us and we are his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece and his ears and his and 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 we we walk and talk in this in this world being filled with the spirit of god and to make it even more complicated <laughs> or to force us to strive for holiness and the nature of god he puts us in this congregation and he says you are all one body because you've been born of the same spirit. So that means we have to work together. Amen. We're more than just members of the same family, but being born of the same spirit, we are the church, which is the body, uh, which is a body, one unit. It's critical to each. Uh, we, we are critical to each other. My, my dad just recently had sh- uh, uh, sh- arm, shoulder surgery and he's got to sit, sit there for what the next six months 
and do a little bit of uh, exercise, but he, he can't use that arm. He can't use that, that and he's, he's finding more and more, th- how more and more difficult it is to do things when you just, you can't use. He's got, he's got toes, he's got, he's got another five fingers, he's got everything else except for that one arm that's got to just sit there. And so many things that he can't do because he's missing a part of his body. Amen. And this is what's being taught to us here is that this is the same thing. There are so many things that the body of Christ can do in this world for God, that we can do in the kingdom of God, but not if we don't like the other side of the body. Not if we are incapable of working together in a spirit of unity with our left foot. Not if we have bitterness with our ear or our eyes. Or we think our nose is probably not that important. I'm just going to ignore them. Amen. Now, I'm not going to make everybody sign up and tell me what you think you are. Say, on the nose... I'm the lower lip, right? It's an analogy. I get that. But we need to recognize that the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, we're not going to be able to do what God wants us to do at full capacity if we're constantly having disruptions with each other. And I'll even go further and say it's going to be difficult for you long term to be effective in the kingdom of God if you're just playing the game because you know you have to, but it's not deep in your heart. When you're holding resentments, when you're holding bitterness, when you're holding anger, when you're holding frustrations because you don't appreciate the other members of the body, And so you're just going along and you're getting along and you're just doing it and you hate every minute of it because they're just not what you want to work with. I'm going to make a confession. Several years ago, I'll just leave it at that because some of you have been here the whole time I've been here. But I was actually feeling very sorry for myself as a pastor. And I was, I was just like, God, I, I, want, I, 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 have this, I have this vision to do this. I, wanna, I, I would love to do that. And I, I just, I just, we, just don't have, we just don't have the right people. We just, we have, let me, let me back up. We, we have good people, but we just, we, we, but, but we can't do this and we can't do that. And we just, ah. I'd like to be able to do this. And God unequivocally said, you work with whoever I send you. And I think he slammed my door. (laughs) You ever done that to your kids? Shut the door. That's what it felt like. You You work with whoever I send you. Okay. I'm sorry, God. And it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a turning point of sorts for me to, to, to realize that, you know what, not just that that's the expectation of God, but I need to realize that there, and, and, and s- not specifically because of that, but just the, my, my attitude change um, is a part of it, I think. But we've been able to discover different things about people and about talents and about th- th- abilities in, in the kingdom of God that we never, that, that I would have never s- seen before. And while maybe w- this, maybe, w- maybe one thing over here isn't, isn't where we want it to be, but yet there's so many other opportunities that are happening on, a, on another level. Why? Because there's different giftings and different talents and every single one of us is valuable and God sets the body the way he wants the body. Amen. And it's my responsibility to recognize, wow, okay, God has this person here for this reason, 
or for some reason, I need to discover what that is. Right? I need to appreciate even those that do things and think about things differently because they're going to bring different things to the table. Amen? Amen. I need to give, we, we need to give opportunities while, while one individual may not be gifted in this other area that we're so worried about, but yet perhaps they're sitting there and they're floundering because they have other gifts that we just are ignoring, we're just not seeing or we're not appreciating. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some people just, we just need to recognize that we're all here. We're all a part of the same body and we need to appreciate each other the way, because we are all part of the same body and we have the same spirit. God placed you in the church and God placed your brother and sister in the church as well. And God placed them because you and the rest of the body needs them. Verse 24 says, But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. We have a responsibility to care for the members of our body. We are supposed to love and care for and help each other, not talk behind each other's backs. Because every member, no matter how easily you click or how you don't, is necessary in the church. And yes, even in your life. Amen. Because they will bring things to your life that you never thought you would. They'll make you think about things like you never would have before. They'll broaden your scope. They'll make you a better man or woman. Verse 26 says, And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. When the members of the body hurt, we hurt. When they cry, we cry with them. We come alongside our brothers and our sisters and are part of each other and each other's experiences. We also rejoice with our uh, brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. The body rejoices in the successes of other members of the body. That's how we roll. We aren't in competition with one another. God's kingdom is abundant. It's not finite. Just because someone else has the ability to shine doesn't mean that you will not when somebody else has, an, is, has a success, we should celebrate that. We should support that. We should cheer that. Not sit on the sidelines going, huh, why do they get to get all the good stuff? Why do they always have to get the success? I could have done that. No, we're part of the same body. We should celebrate. We should encourage. We're like, man, that's awesome. You, you know, when, when, when somebody else gets a, gets a, a, a raise in their job, uh, we, we should be excited for them. Man, that's so cool. But, then, but sometimes we're just, so, we're just so narrow-minded. We just sit over on the side and go, well, I could have used a raise. Why didn't I get a raise? I work just as hard as they do. Instead of being excited, man, they got a raise. That's awesome. That's going to be a blessing to them. I'm glad they've got a blessing. Praise God. It's not like because they got it, you'll never get anything. But we think in these terms sometimes. We think that, 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 it's, that there's only so much to go around. But we forget that we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the, he's the God that he, 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 if, if he doesn't have it, he'll just create it. He made this world out of nothing. There was no world. There was no earth. There were no giraffes. He just said, I just need this, you know, weird looking thing with a long neck. There you go. But sometimes we are so worried. We should not have a finite mentality. We should not have a limited mentality. We should have a, an expansive mentality and a, be able to success, uh, to, to, to celebrate the successes of our brothers and sisters That's a blessing to them and that's a blessing to the body and it's a blessing to the kingdom of God. That's great. God's kingdom is abundant. It's not finite. 
There's plenty of love. There's plenty of work. There's plenty of accolades. There's plenty of recognition to go around. We should not begrudge someone uh, the, the things. If, some, if they're recognized and they, and they, and they, they get, they, they get uh, uh, an attaboy or they get an opportunity, it doesn't mean that you're never going to have an opportunity. It's just that that was theirs. Amen. And if you don't get to do something in the church that someone else has been given the opportunity to do, that just means that God has something else for you to do. It doesn't mean that you don't that God doesn't have a plan and it doesn't doesn't mean that God doesn't have a purpose. It just means that he has something else for you to do. Or perhaps he has that for you to do next time. Amen. Jealousy and resentment should not exist in the body of Christ. And if you're finding yourself jealous or resentful of a brother or a sister, a spouse, a friend, a co-worker, whatever, you yourself may be actually in danger of not be, being a member of the body of Christ because we need to get on our knees and pray that God takes that jealousy and that resentment out of our spirit because that's not of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes one of the cha- most cha- one of the challenging things about a, a leader is being able to I- being able to not just see your own viewpoint and your own need and your own mindset, but uh, to be able to recognize what other people have to offer. I've heard this sometimes in, in coaching. There are certain there are certain coaches who they have the mentality that, uh, I've, I've heard this, but maybe some of you f- who follow sports would, um, would understand this, where they, they say, they, they, um, they look at their football team, let's take that for an example, and they say, wow, we really need a defensive end, or we really need a wide receiver, or, you know, we're, we're, we're missing this piece, and so we want to look at the, 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 the people out there. But there are other people that say, I'm just going to, I'm going to look at the talent that's available, and I'm going to find the most talented person, and I'm going to, and I'm going to develop what they have to offer. Rather than just being stuck and trying to put a square peg into a, to a round hole. And sometimes that's one of the most, uh, more challenging things is you, you look at the, the need that you think you have versus what, uh, what the giftings and talents that other people have and, and perhaps they don't match. And so you have a choice, right? You have a choice. Am I going to be frustrated and, 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 and upset because the talents that are presented to me aren't matching up to the needs that I perceive, or am I going to find a way to allow what someone has to grow and to blossom and to become a blessing of the kingdom of God? Amen. I'm trying to find a balance between those two as the leader of this church. Amen. Looking for that opportunity where, you know what, maybe this need or that need, but, you know, this person, why, why should this person just flounder because... They don't match the need. But maybe we can find a way for them to grow and to expand and blossom in the kingdom of God. Amen. Some people are up front people. Some people are behind the scenes people. Amen. Some people, are, some people uh, like, to, like the limelight and some people sh- shrink from the limelight. Amen. Right? And you say, well, I have a limelight position. I, need, I have, a, I have a, a lead teacher position in Sunday school. But yet I don't have a lead personality. All I have is two or three supporters. Okay, well then let's make those supporting personalities available to help so that it will blossom and grow. And maybe make another leader step up into the place if those other things are, in, are, are available. Because everyone is valuable in the kingdom of God. And everyone has been placed in God's kingdom the way that He sees fit. And sometimes we don't always see the way that God does. We're all members of the same body. And if we bite and devour, 
we talk bad about or act in an uncooperative way, we are damaging our own witness and our own ability to be used of God. Amen. We're all one body. And what I see in this church is I see a church in Olympia that's full of rejoicing for each other's successes. Perhaps we're not there yet, but that's what I see and that's what I desire and that's what I know God wants. I see a church that is cooperative and interactive. I see a church that works together and rejoices together. I see a church that is flexible with one another and gives room for talents that maybe they don't understand. I see a church that is able to appreciate even people that they don't, they're not BFFs with, but yet still appreciate the value of those people. I see a church that's mature. I see, uh, I see a people of God that are mature enough to, 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 be, to be able to still function and be successful and be full of joy even if not everybody gets them. I want to break the news to some of you. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody likes me. Pretty sure I've had more people not be in the church than have stayed. I've been here 10 years. It's been a while. Not every, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But well. What can I do? All I can do is serve God. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to get offended if you don't like me. I want you to. Brother Morgan likes me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But it's just the reality. Okay. Cool. I have a, de- I have a very, very close friend, been a cl- close friend of, for, with, with me for a long time. And this person has other close friends. And... Um, I'm not jealous of that. Because I value the friendship that we have. I, was just, I just met uh, one of his mutual friends. And, and we're, I'm friends with this person too. But just yesterday ran into this person. They said, oh yeah, my, their, their husband's in, in Texas with my friend. They're doing business together. I wasn't invited into that business relationship. <laughs> Why not? Well, because I don't have any money. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. <laughs> it's reality. If I did, maybe the conversation would have been different. <laughs> there, and, there, and that's great. I said, I said are they going to catch a baseball game to, while, while, they're, while they're down there? No, it's just work. Why? I'm not going to be jealous of another relationship because they have something else to offer. I have what I have to offer. Amen? Praise God. Okay, I'm off my notes. We're all members of the same body, and we cannot bite and devour, and we cannot be jealous of each other. But in this church, I see a church that works together and rejoices together, and I see a church full of unity and encouragement. I see a church that works together as the body of Christ in this world even though we are different, even though we are different personalities. And let's be honest, we're kind of a conglomeration of different personalities, if you haven't noticed. (laughs) And some of us get each other, and some of us, we're just like, not sure I get you. (laughs) But I love you. It's okay. I see one God, and I see one body in Christ. Amen. Would you stand as I bring this to a close? I'm actually not going to give an altar call today, but I'm just going to give us an opportunity to, uh, to reflect for a moment. Amen. I believe that we are one. That, that I know that God is one. That, is, that I know. Amen. 
But I believe that we are also on the road to becoming one body. I think as a church, you're always kind of on that road. Because it's a work in progress. Because we're so human that it's something that we have to work on constantly. And sometimes the minute that you think that you appreciate other people and you, you recognize the value of other you know, personalities, as soon as you get to that point, you feel, man, I'm, I'm good. I, I feel like I really appreciate everybody. I recognize these pe- weird people bring blessings to my life. Um, inevitably, something's going to happen that just fires you up. And you don't appreciate them quite as much as you used to. (laughs) And it reminds you, I still have work to do. I still have flesh to overcome. I I, I still have some prayers that I need to pray. Some time that I need to spend with God. And even though I don't understand this person, even though I don't get them, They're still valuable to God. And if I will appreciate them, they will be a blessing to my life and I can be a blessing to theirs. Amen. But you have to have that determination. You have to have that, make that decision. And church, I proclaim to you today that our God is one and we are one body. Amen. Amen. We are members of one another and our work together in the kingdom is of one effort and one motivation. We are the church. We are the most important institution that this world in this world and we are the ambassadors of God to this world. And we need to do it together because we will not be able to be at full capacity when we don't have each other. We can only do so much. But if we'll do it together, we'll be able to do much greater things. And so I say, let's do this together. Because truly, the only way that the church can operate as the hands and feet and the heart of God in this world is if we recognize that we are the body of Christ. And I need you, and you need me, and this world desperately needs us. Amen. Praise God. I'd like you to bow your heads for a moment. I want you to just think about this and just open up your heart for a moment. Lord Jesus, God, if there's if there's someone that we're struggling to appreciate, I pray God that you would help us. Lord, if we're holding any animosity, any resentments, any bitterness, Lord God to another brother or sister in your king in your in your in your family in in our body Lord Jesus I just pray that you would help us Lord God to let go of that Lord Jesus let us see with your eyes and let us feel with your heart Lord God Lord let us recognize Jesus that all of us are your children You created us in the same in in the, the same spirit the same image God, and you created us to be in fellowship with each other. God, we've been born again of the same Spirit, Lord Jesus. And we are part of the same body. And God, we need each other. We need what we each have to bring. I pray for your grace and your mercies, Lord. I pray that you would go with us in this place. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.